Hello and welcome to O Worm. Now, ground rules. There are a lot of terms people used for the plural of octopus, including octopi, octopuses, and octopodes. I'll be using octopuses in this video because that's the technically correct term grammatically. Octopuses are part of the phylum Mollusca, which includes animals like clams and mussels. At some point in its evolutionary history, octopuses got rid of those shells. And while a small subgroup of octopuses have an internal skeleton, most octopuses have almost entirely soft bodies. Octopuses are also part of a group called cephalopods, which also includes animals like cuttlefish and squids. Now, octopuses are sometimes called the closest thing to alien life on Earth. This is because octopuses, who are so intelligent that they're famous for outsmarting humans and escaping laboratories, diverged from the human evolutionary line long before the first primitive brain arose. This means that octopuses found its intelligence by an entirely different evolutionary path than ours. In other words, if you want to understand how alien intelligence could form, then octopuses are the closest thing we have. Now let's take a look at the octopus's external anatomy. Now, one of the most remarkable things about octopuses is their skin. If you get a closer look at it, you can see a lot of little colored dots here. These are called chromatophores, which are specialized pigment cells that can change color. Now, this top part is called the mantle of the octopus, which is the main body and fits like a sheath over most of the internal organs. You can see how this works better if I flip it over. So you can see how this fits over all the internal organs. Okay, now you can see this siphon, right here. And this is used to expel jets of water that shoot the octopus through the water. To do this, the octopus pulls water into the space inside its mantle cavity, here, then clamps the mantle shut like this, and forces the water out through the siphon. But here's something interesting. Jet propulsion is accompanied by cardiac arrest. That's right. Jet propulsion actually builds up so much pressure in the octopus's mantle cavity, right here, that its heart can't beat against the pressure. This is why for octopuses, jet propelled movement is limited to distances of just a few meters. Any longer than that, and they die. Okay, so now let's zoom into the eye of the octopus right here. It's quite large for an organism of its size, and there's one on each side. So here's one. And here's another, but this one's harder to see. So the eyes seem opaque here, but that's because of the preservative. The eyes will be clear in a living organism. Octopus eyes are actually very similar to ours in terms of anatomy and abilities. Both octopuses and humans have eyes called camera type eyes. And camera type eyes have a lens inside them, which I'll try to take out. So here's the lens of the octopus. Now here are the arms of the octopus. Octopuses actually have zero tentacles. The difference between tentacles and arms is that arms have suckers along most of their length, as opposed to tentacles, which have suckers only near their ends. So you can see that all 8 of the octopus's limbs have suckers all the way throughout, which means that they're all arms and not tentacles. These suckers provide suction to grip prey. After that, the arms then move the prey to the octopus's mouth, which you can see in the center, right here. It's a bit hard to see right now. The octopus actually has a structure called a beak inside its mouth to cut up its prey that we'll see later. These arms will also help us sex this octopus. So look for the third left arm of the octopus. So one, two, three, this arm right here. And in a female octopus, you'll see that this arm looks like all of the other seven arms. However, in a male octopus, you'll see a white tube that runs the length of this arm. This is because in a male octopus, 
This arm is specialized to store and deliver sperm to the female through this tube. The specialized arm is called the hectocotylus. You can see that in this octopus, this arm doesn't look specialized, so this is a female octopus and doesn't have a hectocotylus. You can also see one of its arms is really short right here, this one. And this is probably because it got cut off at some point and regenerated, but didn't reach its full length yet. Now let's take a look at the internal anatomy. So my cut is going to line up with this siphon right here. So cut from one of the gaps between the arms and all the way up. Make sure your scissors aren't angled down because you might damage some of the internal structures if you do so. So once you've cut along the front, peel the mantle back and also cut along the back so that you can see the internal organs from the back as well. So now let's take a look at the space between the mantle and the arms of the octopus. So here is the brain of the octopus, and it's surrounded by this cartilage skull. Octopuses actually have a really decentralized nervous system, so they have nine brains. The central brain right here, and a smaller brain in each of the eight arms. This central brain here is actually donut shaped, with the esophagus passing through the hole in the middle. Now this can be a bit awkward, because it means that everything the octopus eats must pass through the brain. Although the octopus does have a beak to cut food into smaller pieces, if the octopus accidentally eats something too large, they risk brain injury or even death. Now below the brain, this ball-shaped structure is called the buccal mass, and this is where the mouth leads into. So here in the buccal mass, you can see the beak, so this hard black structure, so it looks a bit like a parrot's beak. Let me see if I can take it out. So here's the beak of the octopus. This beak is actually the only hard part of the octopus's body, which means that the octopus can pass through any hole bigger than this beak. Now moving up, let's get into the digestive system. This greenish mass here, buried under all of these other structures, is the digestive gland of the octopus. It releases digestive enzymes to help break down food. Some people also call this the liver because it does a lot of typical liver functions as well, like detoxification. And now this tube here. This is the esophagus. And if we follow the esophagus up, we can see this structure, which is the crop. And the crop is where food is held before being digested in the stomach. And here's the stomach right here. Food is digested in the stomach and passes into the cecum, which you can see from this angle. So this is the cecum, which is where most of the nutrient absorption takes place. And after that, the food passes through the intestine here, and the waste is expelled out of the octopus through the siphon. Now let's look at these two things. There's one here. And there's another one right here. These are the gills of the octopus. There's one on each side, and these gills provide gas exchange, taking in oxygen and expelling carbon dioxide. Above each of the gills, you can see these triangular dark structures. So one here, and you can see another one on the other side. So right here. These are the branchial hearts, which pump blood specifically to the gills. There's also a systemic heart, which pumps blood to the rest of the octopus, which you can see right here, so this structure. So this structure way up top, this round circular structure, 
is the gonad or reproductive organ. This would be the testis in males and the ovary in females. So since this octopus is a female, this would be an ovary. Moving way down, we can see the retractor muscles. So one here, and another one on the other side. So these retractor muscles move the octopus's head. The octopus can use these muscles to steer because the siphon is also attached to the head. So by moving the siphon, the octopus can move the direction of the jet of water, changing its direction. Now I want to point out this dark structure here. So like this dark line next to the intestine right here. This one. And this is the ink sac of the octopus. Octopuses eject ink from their ink sac to distract predators while they escape. This ink is made of concentrated melanin, which is the same pigment that we humans have in our hair and skin. But the ink also physically harms enemies. It contains a compound called tyrosinase, which causes a blinding irritation when sprayed in a predator's eyes, and also confuses the sense of smell and taste of the predator. In fact, the ink is so potent that octopuses that do not escape their own ink cloud can die. I that's the end of the octopus dissection. Thanks for staying, folks. Here's a fun fact about octopuses to send you on your way. All species of octopus are thought to be venomous. However, the only octopus that has venom strong enough to harm humans is the blue-ringed octopus, which is considered to be one of the most venomous animals known. The venom of one blue-ringed octopus is enough to kill 10 people. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more.